If the last lecture was the most boring one we're going to have on crystallography, I think today's might be the most important because we're going to introduce the idea of crystal systems, which is another part of our architectural approach to classifying all the different crystals and all 5,500 minerals that have been identified. In the textbook, Crystal Systems, let's put an S here, is on pages 182 to 208. And we can't cover that all that ground in just these next 15 minutes. So we'll start with it today and then move on in the next 15 minute video. Now last class we walked through 32 different crystal classes within the framework of Hermann Mogan notation. And we highlighted these top 10 that are, um, hold most of the minerals that occur on Earth. Well, today we're going to keep breaking that 10 down um, with the concept of crystal systems. And as we go through this, right, our further organization, we need to work with crystallographic axes so that when you see a mineral, let's say like this beautiful barrel crystal, right, variety of emerald, you up till now what you do is you're going to count the sides, you're going to see that there's an A6, right, and you would be able to identify that. You put the axis here, right, and then you'd also see that there are two folds that are coming out of the faces and that are coming out of the edges. You'd be able to identify, uh, it's dotted in here, right, and a mirror, and there's probably another mirror here, and there's mirrors here, and there's mirrors here. All of that now can be better organized in Inside the Hermann Wilgan shorthand and also now the crystal system shorthand. So anytime you see a crystal block or you see a crystal, here's an image from the textbook. What I want your mind's eye to be able to do is to draw in these crystallographic axes A, B, and C from the center point of the crystal. And if you can do that and recognize the lengths and the angles between these axes, right? So like this angle here, for example, or this 90 degree angle there. If you can do that, then you're gonna be very good at recognizing crystallography. All right, so let's get started through this. So this is, we're, we're on Roman numeral four, and we're gonna put an A here, and we say that we further classify, further, let's do better penmanship than that, further classify, using imaginary axes within a crystal. And specifically, we're going to look at the lengths of those axes, and we're going to look at the angles between those axes. These are things that we're doing in our mind's eye, holographic projections, right, in our imagination inside of crystals and the angles between axes. These are the tools that we're going to learn. We're going to draw something like this again and again and again. Let's do it this first time really carefully, and we'll get bet, and then we'll um, move forward from there later, maybe with more speed. But what we're going to have is we're going to have A, B, and C axes. So these axes are going to be labeled A. B and C. Most of the time, there'll be some exceptions to that. With our axes, here's our center point, we're going to have a positive C axis, and then below that line there's a negative C axis. We have a minus B axis and a plus B axis, so here we'll draw the arrow like this. And then coming towards us, out of the page, we're going to put the A axis, so it comes out like this, and here is our positive A, and then going back into the page, is our minus A. Uh huh. So the length of these axes we're going to care about. A, B, and C can all be the same length or they can all be different lengths. And then the next thing we're going to worry about is the angles between these axes. And so the angle between C and B, this angle right here, that angle is called alpha. And you could maybe put alpha between C and B. Okay, and then there's other angles to worry about. There's gamma. Gamma is the angle here between alpha, or sorry, between A and B. Okay, so this is the symbol for gamma. And so we could say gamma is between the A axis and the B axis. 
And then there's one last angle to worry about. It is our beta angle, and beta comes between C and A. All right, those are our angles and our axes that we care along, or that we care about. Now the axes, a couple rules here about our axes. Let's put in some, uh, let's see, further classify, let's say rules for axes. Rules for axes. Well, one rule about the axes is they should run along the unit cell. Maybe that won't help you too much in practice, but that's a good um, theoretical idea about them. Now, they should also run parallel or perpendicular to major crystal faces. So let's say that run parallel, that's the symbol for parallel, or perpendicular, that's the symbol for perpendicular, to major crystal faces. And what that allows us to do is use crystal faces to visualize how these axes occur. And I think that might be enough introduction for us to dive into our first example. And we're only going to do two examples right now. We'll start with the lowest symmetry and we'll move on to the highest symmetry. And so what we're going to do is so we have crystal systems and we're going to go into crystal system triclinic. The crystal system triclinic encompasses our Hermann Morgan notation. We had 10 of those. This is the bar one crystal class that we cared about. And what did the bar one have in terms of symmetry elements? Well, all it actually had was a center of symmetry, also known as a roto inversion. So what we're going to do here is we're going to just draw what the axes look like inside of a triclinic crystal. And importantly, as we do this, we need to achieve two things. We need to make sure that the length of the a-axis does not equal the length of the b-axis, which does not equal the length of the c-axis. They are all unequal. Okay. And the other thing we need to do is make sure that alpha, wait, that's not alpha, is it? Yeah, that's alpha. Alpha does not equal beta, which does not equal gamma. Again, all the angles are unequal. Triclinic crystals, the system, has the lowest symmetry possible. Lowest symmetry possible. Of all the minerals in the world, what percent here? It's like only like 2% of minerals are triclinic. It's not the most common type of mineral. But there are some famous minerals that are triclinic. For example, kyanite is maybe one of the most photographic and aesthetically pleasing triclinic minerals. And certainly one that you need to know for the purposes of um, well, my class I and mean, probably your class, wherever you are. As we draw the axes here, we're going to have the plus C and the minus C. And we're going to make the B axis cannot be the same length as the C axis. We'll make it shorter. So we're going to go, uh, where is this? Uh-oh, I made a mistake, guys. Do you see this? I drew that angle in at 90 degrees. We can't do that. We cannot have it be 90. We need to have it be m different than 90. So I'm going to draw this in like so. And now as I draw in my shorter B, I'm going to have it come through at a wonky angle. All right, and now that's going to be my plus B direction and my minus B direction. And then lastly, we need to put an A. We can't have it be 90 degrees. We also can't have it be this angle. So we're just going to kind of randomly throw it through like so. All right, and there's our plus A. And there's our minus A. And so as we set this up, what we have established is that C is the longest. So we go, let's say C is greater than B, which is greater than A. They are not the same lengths. And in terms of our angles, we can do the same thing. We will draw in our alpha angle right here. That's alpha. It's a really big angle, right? And we can draw in our gamma right here. It's a little bit less than 90 degrees, it looks like on mine. In your sketch, it might be different than that. Just make sure it's not 90. It cannot be 90. And we should say that right here. We should say they're unequal, and they cannot be equal to 90 degrees. That's a really important um, part of this. And then we have another angle right here, and that is our beta. So if you see a triclinic block, and if 
this is what you will visualize. A is not equal to B is not equal to C. They're unequal lengths, and the angles are not equal to one another, and none of them are equal to 90 degrees. Other minerals, so we had kyanite was one example here. There's other minerals as well. There are microcline is a famous one. It can be triclinic, I believe, and so can some of the other plage. We did it. That's triclinic. Now, let's do another system as well. There are, th there are a bunch of different systems, and maybe we should put them up here. We have triclinic, rules for axes, further classification. We've just done this example, triclinic. And we have monoclinic, tetragonal, orthorhombic, hexagonal, and isometric to go. In fact, what I want to do is I'm going to skip over these increasing amounts of symmetry. So triclinic's the least, monoclinic's the next, then orthorhombic, then tetragonal becomes more symmetric, then tetragonal, and then finally isometric is the most. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip ahead to the isometric system. And that's how we'll finish this lecture. Next lecture, we'll talk about all the others. So we're going to go capital D. This is our isometric iso, ah, isometric system. This is the most symmetric system. And because it's most symmetric, there's going to be a lot of equalities here. What we have is, in terms of our axes, they are all equal to one another in terms of their length. That means that A equals B, which equals C. And our angles, they are also all equal. How can that be? The only way they can all be equal is if alpha equals beta, which equals gamma, and that equals 90. Okay, so every intersection of, the, of um, axes is at 90 degrees. Everything is perpendicular. There were two main classes within the isometric system that you needed to learn, and the most important of which is the 4 over m bar 3, 2 over m. And so if we were to draw the axes for this crystal system, what would they look like? what we do here is we draw in a line and the, it has to be the exact same length as this the, so the C and the B are the same exact length and the angle between them is 90 degrees and then the A comes out like here it also goes to the back like that and the A and, and it also has to be the same length and the angle between A and B needs to be 90 degrees, and between C and A needs to be 90 degrees. So take your time and make sure you've drawn all those things so very equal. Now what you'll find in the textbook is that because A equals B equals C, there's no point in differentiating them, all is different. And so sometimes you'll find um, this referred to in the textbook as just A1, A2, and A3, because they can't be told apart. They're all interchangeable with one another. What does this look like in practice? Well, we might see a shape like this, a beautiful fluorite crystal. In this case, it's an octahedron. If we were to try to put the axes into this, they would fall inside the crystal. There'd be a middle point here, and we would have the axes shoot out, like so, and all of them are at 90 degrees to one another. And it's hard to see with this three-dimensional representation, but they're all the same length as well. Lengths are equal. I've said that a couple times, haven't I? What's another example of this same crystal class? Well, the cube. This is another example of fluoride. This one's the cleavage fragment. This one's not. But we can throw in our axes, and it's very easy probably to see here that they must be at 90 degrees to one another in order to follow the crystal faces. There's one other crystal system in the isometric that we need to worry about that has the same axes though, and that was the bar 4 3m system. This one makes a shape called a tetrahedron. We'll look at some of these shapes in lab. 
But if we were to do the axes for a tetrahedron, well, they're gonna be this, they're gonna be the same here. Well, I think I'm running out of time for this lecture, and we'll pick it up again later with the other systems. See you then.